Good evening, everyone. I was asked to do a little video tutorial on the Brahms Waltz, Opus 39, number 15. There are a few points that I think can make a huge difference on this piece uh, to it coming across convincingly. And one of them has to do with timing and micro counting. If you just start playing the piece and you think, oh, it's fine, I can just go, like, I can go, uh, it's all screwed up. It's not right. It's not accurate. You need to keep it within the unfolding of a steady pulse. So if you can think, uh, because there's eighths and there's sixteenths, and there's dotted eighths and there's quarters, there's, there's so many different things, dotted quarters. So if you can think one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, it's, it's this swing. If you see a metronome and it's going like this, and you can see that regular thing. Imagine that, that there's a pendulum hanging there. And it's swinging, swing, swing, swing. And when you can feel that in your mind and you can micro count with your tongue at the same time, then you will keep it unfolding to a structure of time and it'll be steady. Then you can spread at the ends of your phrases and breathe and start the next phrase and things like that. But it'll be all within that context of, of uh, continuity and uh, tempo and evenness. So I'll, I'll, I'll go through a little bit of it slowly just to give you an idea of what I mean. See, if I go, uh, wrong glasses. <laughs> if I go one, two, three, one, two, it's not going to work. I need to have one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three. So the, the evenness is going to be there and no rushing. And the micro counting with your tongue makes a huge difference to keeping it that way. You have to do slow, heavy practice, like we really get that drop of your weight and feel that on the way down, the wrist is movable, but it's steady, it's slightly dropped, so it's that loose. And then the fingers are able to feel the resistance of the key coming in as you go down. And then then you can take grip and, and move the weight to the next melodic line note and one and two and three and one two three and one and two and three. You always want a beautiful tone. This piece is supposed to be a tender, gracious, sweet, and starts softly. So if it's starting softly, you can't play it when it's got to come in. So you want to hear all the notes of the chord, all the voices, but you want to voice the soprano more for the melody and, and then link the melody to the next note and keep it, keep it singing. So one and two and three and one and two and three and one. Now this is the next spot that's hard. to play those notes and actually have them sounding. Especially if you've got your fourth finger on the D flat and you've got to go five, four, three. So to keep that line smooth, those are the fourth finger is so weak. And so if you can overlap, and if I count in sixteenths, one and to the tick, one, two, three, four, slowly, one, two, three, four, one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. The first time it comes, it's this A flat. The next time it comes, it's the low one. So it's to keep that clear. One and two and three and one. So when you're doing this, 
to make it strong. Do slow, heavy, high lift practice. And when you play down in your heavy practice, find a pressure by pressing down tight, tight, tight after you flop everything to the floor. Press tight, tight down from the main arch with that fourth finger. And you'll feel strength in that fourth finger. And then you want to feel the same strength in that one and that one while you hold these two because they're a quarter. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So, one, two. so do uneven practice, slow and heavy, like this. And pr forget about lengths of notes altogether and just go long, short, long, short, long, and go short. And that's hard because you have to shape for that really quickly. From down here, you have to shape for that. One, two, so one. So one, two, and hold that. Then the second way, short, long. And then triplets, one, two, three, four, short, and they're independent fingers. Press down without pulling up in the wrist. That's the secret to, to building the strength of an independent finger, is that when you press down, it's just from the knuckle, it's all in the hand. You're not, you're not trying to press from, from behind the wrist and then end up pushing. That'll give you an, an ugly sound. You want a warm sound. So you've got to be able to feel the key pushing back at you as you feel the pressure increasing of you pressing down from the knuckle without pulling up in the wrist. That's the trick. Now lift without pulling in the wrist either. So you've got a quick sharp finger action through a full range of motion and you've got the depth of the finger. So if you do it do pull it's and then the second way hold those bottom ones. Now triplet, one, that's hard, so lift your fingers, got to hear the top. So one, two, three, one, and then the second way, now triplet, now the third way, straight to the third note. too long, too short. Now the other way, too short, too long. And then long, short, short, long. Long, short, short, long. Long, short, short, long. <laughs> now I didn't look at those. So long, short, short, long. Long, short, short, long. So keep it in that group, repeat it till it's perfect. It's like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And hear all the notes. And even if it's rolled, just play it solid for now. Then long, short, one, two, three, four, one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And keep it heavy and get the drop. So that'll be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's weak, so I do that over. to get over it before you drop and do it heavy and high lift then do it even this is all out of time because it's uh, <laughs> different lengths notes it's eighth notes because of the dot but forget about that right now just go one note after another and I'm weak on that last chord so I'd have to shape for that and I get it 
and then do it the way it's written for timing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this part here, when you do it all those uneven ways, you suddenly realize why it's not easy to play when you're playing it as a piece. It's because the bottom two notes are holding their quarters with the stem down, and the top is an eighth followed by two sixteenths. But uneven practice is going to make you realize when you do it evenly where the difficulty lies, and then you'll be aware of it as it unfolds as a piece. Now, Phrasing is very important, and if you practice the melody line alone, you'll see where the phrasing is. Like, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. That's the end of that phrase, and it spreads like that. It's like four bars. A regular normal sentence has eight bars. So then, And they balance the four bars here, balance with the next four bars, this kind of thing. The line always has to go somewhere. You always want to take the listener in a direction. So if it starts softly, and you just have to keep a balance of the voices, that's all. One and two and three and four and Slentando, so spread it and s move it around a little bit and ease out of that phrase when it goes. Ya -da -da. And it starts all over again. Come in special. Make it that you want. It's gushy. It's, you want to squeeze it. You know, uh, when you come. To and I lift the back of the upper arm up so that I've got more clout in the drop. But I got to rotate like a doorknob my hand so that I get the the voicing on the top when I come down. And I, I'm going to press on that top finger tight on the keyboard, but I'm not pressing before the weight gets in there as the origin of the sound. So when I can come down in there and go... Um, well, I'll go, back, I'll go on to the next last two lines of the piece then, because that's another example of where after it goes... Lift it all up and then... It's like as there's a test tube of water and you're sinking into it and the finger is pressing down to somewhere, find the bottom of that test tube and feel a pressure that you're going to be able to crawl to the next note and keep it, keep the line flowing. So uh, when you go up, you see. Spread that. I should have spread that. I'll do that once again. And I want to spread that even more. I want to make them longer. So that's where micro counting comes in really well. Because if you were counting that in sixteenths, and you slow down the count of the sixteen, you put a retard on the count of the sixteenth, your phrase will slow down. So if you're going one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Now gentle, so you gotta come in. See if I just play it. It doesn't sing. It's if music doesn't sing or speak, it's not gonna communicate anything. And 
at that point you've spread into a large section. It's opened up when so that's when you spread. So but don't hit. Let's go. part you can come in and play it a little bit slower still so then it moves it's really a beautiful piece and uh, but do slow heavy where you right in the time of the piece like one and counting quarters one two so that's where you can put this to the quarter so it would be even slower so you can lift your fingers and you can press tight 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 with the wrist movable Practices without the pedal. You want to hear what you're doing. You want to hear how steady it is. You want to hear that none of the to tones are, or the tone of any of the chords is harsh. It's got to be warm, even in your heavy practice. So then when you go to play it with the damper pedal and you have a clean pedal release when you change your chords. <laughs> gives you some ideas to work with on that piece. It's so well worthwhile playing. I think that's in the grade eight, in the old Toronto Conservatory grade eight book. It's a beautiful piece and well worth learning. Uh, it's a beautiful melody. Anyway, have a good night. Bye-bye.